Oh, okay. Okay. It's your Hey, what's right. happening, people? Welcome back to the Indie Writer Pro Podcast. I'm joined today by uh, Star Wars YouTube community legend, uh, Mr. John Paul Wright, a.k.a. the Entertainment Hacker. What is happening? What's up? So uh, uh, what's the, uh, the load down? What's the word on the street about episode nine? Well, obviously, there's mixed opinions. And obviously, people who like Raylo and that kind of thing are into it. You know, obviously, spoilers coming up, by the way. You know, obviously, they share that kiss. But generally, I think a lot of people are saying, whether you enjoyed the movie or not, because I know you enjoyed it. Hey, I enjoyed it when I saw it for the first time. When you realize what it does to episodes one through six, then it kind of hurts the trilogy or the saga, I should say in my opinion. Right. Um, so, so in terms of the sequel trilogy, how would you say it ranks? Because in, in my view, it's my favorite of the last three of them. Well, there's two ways to look at this question. It's definitely better action and more enjoyable than The Force Awakens and The Last Jedi. That, that's for sure. Yep. I think mm -hmm. you could say it's a better movie as far as a movie goes. Like if the original trilogy and one through six didn't exist, I think it would just like blow away Force Awakens and Rise of Skywalker I, and um, um, Last Jedi. But unfortunately, what it does is it really ruins a lot of things that come before it, especially with the Palpatine bloodline with Rey is kind of odd and the way Rey is the chosen one and not Anakin. You know, it's an opinion whether you liked it or not, but this is like a 40-year lore, you know? Mm -hmm. So basically, I, I'm not sure why they had to do that except for well i have an idea but we won't get into that like right now let's just say okay. a lot of people don't like that right uh yeah i've heard about that i've seen some of your coverage on it uh i i think there are some some definite uh, uh upsides to the film i loved seeing for one the flashback of luke and leia training i thought was really cool to see uh, a lot of cool little moments like that uh, chewbacca got his uh, uh medal which i thought was uh well deserved that was well deserved. That was awesome. You know, a lot of cool little moments. On, I mean, yeah, I don't have a strong opinion on that. Just a little thing, really. Really? On the medal? But like, who is Maz to give? That was a medal that was he was supposed to get at the ceremony. You can't really fix that. Well, and Maz just randomly hands him a medal. Like it was just a fix. I know, man. I know. It, it was just nice to see something like that. Uh, um, what did you think of Palpatine? <sighs> Look, man, obviously, you know, it's great seeing Palpatine on screen. You know, E. McDermott is always great, but the whole problem is it wasn't set up. You know, there was no mention of him in episodes seven and eight. So if you look at that as a saga, it's like, why is there a, you know, hole of no Palpatine in seven and eight? It makes no sense, man. And the they problem did mention, is. They mentioned him once. Okay, there's no mention of him coming back, actually, right. as a villain. You know, Luke mentioned him in a deleted scene, I rem I recall, from The Last oh, Jedi. That, that they took that out? Yeah, he definitively, you know, mentioned him there. But there was no actual plot buildup to him coming back. And there's no explanation to how he came back or how he survived. So, again, it goes back to them not thinking about the fans who have loved the franchise for 40 years. And it goes to, well, you know, let's just worry about... Maybe who didn't even even see the original trilogy? We'll pander to them. Or we'll make this for them. Well, they they uh, I've heard certain uh, reports that have said that Lucas had always planned to bring back uh, Palpatine in nine. Uh, I, I mean the the original drafts and, and things he uh, gave to Kennedy. Uh, I I for based on what I've seen, uh, he always intended on Palpatine coming back, and you also see grounds for that in Legends okay. with Dark Empire. Well, we have a conflict all that there, stuff. We have a conflict there because Ian McDermott said that Lucas told him he was never coming back. And, you know, McDermott said he was shocked when they called him because he never thought Palpatine would come back. So we maybe need more information to develop on that. Like I told you, okay. it's still so fresh. It's hard to talk about definitive things. You know what I mean? No, no, I hear you. Um, uh, well, that, that's one of those things where I don't think they always keep the actors in the loop. You know what I mean? I, I don't think that they, they really you know, provide that, that, that care to their actors and say, Hey, look, we're thinking of doing something in a couple, couple of years from now. You know, I, I don't think that's really 
uh, maybe Disney style. Uh, maybe, maybe not. Because don't forget, you know, he told Mark Hamill when Mark Hamill was like 21, hey, you're going to come back and play a Ben Kenobi type role, you know, when you're like 50. <laughs> so, you know. Well, what, what about Dark Empire? I don't know much about that. Palpatine comes back from the dead. He has a clone body. Okay, so similar, you know. similar to the Zahn books. Yeah, I mean, so I, I mm -hmm. mean, I think there's grounds for it in Legends. I think uh, mm -hmm. another positive yeah. aspect of uh, Rise of Skywalker was um, kind of giving more of, of Leia's uh, Jedi backstory, I thought was very interesting. Finding out she has a lightsaber, I thought was cool. Seeing, the, like I said, the fight scene was pretty cool. Um, it was all right. I mean, it was super short, man. It was, it was what, 10 seconds? Well, it's in there, though. I mean, I never yeah. thought I would see something like that. I, yeah, I, I I enjoyed seeing it. It was cool, but it was short. It was short. It was like 10 seconds, you know? So, like, the best stuff we get is always, like, 10 seconds. Like, right. my my one scene that I really love from The Last Jedi, which is like a gem in a pile of crap, is when, you know, Luke and R2 see the hologram of Leia. It's like, a, whoever wrote that, whether it was Kathleen Kennedy herself or Ryan Johnson, that was a genius call to put that in The Last Jedi. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of the same thing with Rise of Skywalker. Like, yeah, that was a good throwback to Luke and Leia, but it was like 10 seconds. That's what I want the whole movie to be, stuff like that, you know? Well, uh, I also wanted to ask you about this. I seen uh, a video of yours about, uh, I believe it was Chris Stuckman, uh, right? What what was uh, what was said? Okay. Okay, first of all, that wasn't my video. That was a crazy crab did the entire video. I've only listened to it once, but... I, if I recall, Steve, uh, Stuckman said something like, okay, you don't like Star Wars because it's not how you remember it, okay? And, like, like, there's some truth to that, but we don't like it because it's just not good storytelling. And there is an agenda in there by Kathleen Kennedy, like, whether how, how strong it is, we could debate, but it's definitely there for the female characters, yeah. especially in uh -huh. The Last Jedi, you know, and that kind yeah, of thing really, really bothers me. You know, even with Luke and Leia, they had to show Leia knock down Luke. Just little things like that. Ray Ray beats Kylo every time they fight. That I mean, that's just bad writing. Aside from everything, you're a writer, man. So you think building fear in your villains is having them get beat every time they fight the hero? Would you write something like that? No, I haven't. I mean, would you? No. I wouldn't. No. You know, but um. So the the way I sort of see Rise of Skywalker is J.J. Uh, Abrams didn't didn't chart out this entire uh, storyline. He had to deal with Ryan Johnson's vision. So so in terms of him picking up the pieces after, uh, you know, you have a fan base which is now uh, uh, sectioned off. You have uh, different groups within the fan base. Uh, it's it's very controversial, more so than ever before. Um, and I think he was in a, a really crappy position going into it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, absolutely. But, you know, the thing is, basically for me, the problem's Ray. And that's mostly what it boils down to. Like, if I can't enjoy the main character, how can I enjoy the movie on the whole? I can enjoy it once when I've never seen it before and I don't know what's going to happen. I can enjoy it one time, but I can't really go back to it because it was basically, they didn't, again, like I said, Ray doesn't have any real struggles. She doesn't get hurt at all. You know, it doesn't have to be a, you don't have to lose a limb. We don't have to make that a, you know, necessary thing to make a Star Wars movie, but she doesn't really mm -hmm. take any damage at all. She just goes right through it. Like, I, I feel like in, in, in this one, she had more of that. Right, I felt like there was a little bit more of that. Uh, she she did show certain respects, which I appreciated that they included those things. Like uh, she hands Luke's lightsaber to to Leia and says, "This is uh, Luke's lightsaber. I don't deserve this." You know, little moments like that. Uh, she, and she, you know, she did some training, uh, which should have been in Episode One of this new saga. Yeah, exactly. You know, you know it's 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 out of whack. It's out of order. Well. Um, at least it's in there. You know what I mean? At least it's in there. Not really. It kind of looks awkward now where it is. If you watch the trilogy as a whole, like why is she getting trained in the beginning of three? It, it just looks awkward now. Again, like you said, it's the last Jedi. That should have been in the last Jedi. 
either one or Force Awakens, either one of them. Yeah. So it's yeah, like you said, the word everyone's using is appreciate. Yeah, we appreciate that they did a few things, but it looks silly now. Because now if you watch it and like Luke catches a lightsaber and says, don't throw away your Jedi weapon, it doesn't make sense. Why well, it, did he do, you know? That is is going back in and, and changing some of the decisions. That's what that is. Which going, on, on JJ's part, he's changing some of the decisions that were made by Johnson. Right. That's short term right. gain. Long term, it's going to look stupid. Like well, 20 years from now. I mean, it, clearly the one of the laziest uh, examples of this is Snoke, right? I, that's, yeah. I mean, but uh, doing something like that and having Snoke be a clone is is not in its concept a terrible idea. It was just a terrible execution. I agree. Uh, yeah, and, you know, you look. Star Wars is about clones. It's you know, cl even in Episode Four, which is the first one we've ever seen, you know, it was kind of like Episode One in a way. You know, they mention clones off the bat yep. in the first act, so it's always been about clones. That's not a problem. I I agree on that. Well, did Did you ever see the show Rick and Morty? I haven't. No. Okay, because there was a great example of of that sort of puppeteering by another character that was done brilliantly. Okay. Yeah, like I said, we have to go back to the first part of the conversation. If it had been properly seated in our minds, there were hints for that. That would have been fine. Like if we had Palpatine's laugh at like, you know, the end of Rise of Skywalker or something like that, you know, and then we had like a cutaway scene where imagine at the you, end. You mean Last last Jedi, you mean? No, 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 no. At the, imagine at the end of The Force Awakens, we see the hologram of Palpatine talking to Snoke. Just briefly. Just we get an idea. Right. Like, oh, oh, well, you know, what are we in for now for like this trilogy? You know what I mean? Because that's been a tradition too. Hologram with Darth Maul, hologram with Vader, main villains, hologram with Snoke, you know, because he wasn't going to do it with Kylo because they were kind of tricking Kylo. Bam, you'd be like, whoa, that's an ending. Instead, we get, I think, one of the worst historical endings where the hero beats the villain somehow, you know? It could have been so much better. That's why I can't really hardly give it any props and give it any compliments. Um well, feel free to disagree with me throughout this whole thing. You know, feel free to disagree, whatever. Um, I I thought, let me know if you agree with this, that Kylo Ren was more intimidating this time around. At what point of the movie? The first and second acts. He was, he was right there. He was a threat. He seemed more intelligent than his past portrayals. Yeah, I, I agree. This was the best version we got of Kylo. But yep. the glued together helmet looked a little silly. Uh, I kind of liked it. But they even had to mention in the movie, they even made a point to say, oh, you don't like my helmet? Because they knew people would be thinking, I, I don't know, man. It just, I, I would have rather him had a just new one, the same model, you know? That is, I think, my biggest gripe with this film is cheesy dialogue. Um, yes, it looks great, sir. <laughs> you know, it's kind of it's kind of silly. Um the the one dude saying I'm the spy, you know, is, is kind of lackluster. Okay. But um, I think there's a lot of good things in this one. Um, I don't think uh, it's as divisive as some of the last ones. I think it. Th yeah, they went I completely disagree because of the ending, because of reckoning Anakin. It's more divisive than anything. It it kind of backtracks and you know makes you think of the one through six in a more different light than the Last Jedi does. The Last Jedi ruin Luke, this ruins the entire first six movies if you're okay. invested in the Anakin saga, okay? But like I said, as a movie making, as an enjoyment, you know, as like a roller coaster ride for a day at the movies, I definitely agree with you, it's the best one in that way. And other YouTubers agree with you also, like Doomcock said it's the best and the worst at the same time, which I think is, is like, you know, the best way to describe it. Uh, well, uh, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna make a point here. I, I don't know if you, you're gonna agree with this, but um, I don't think Ray killed Palpatine. I think okay. That, I don't. I'm I'm open to hearing things. Yeah, why not? I, so it's my interpretation that the the all the Jedi killed Palpatine. It, it's also my interpretation that Palpatine and Ray are avatars of the Force. They are avatars of the light and the dark side. So it wasn't Ray who single handedly killed Palpatine. It was the that that final confrontation of good and evil.
here's the major problem with that for me is that needs to be explained in the movie so we at least get that hint. Because theories like that are just going to go around for years and we're never going to know. Even if somebody confirms it, like, you know, even Lucas himself confirms that, it's got to be in the movies. Well, it was kind of in the movie. Uh, They say uh, Palpatine says all the Sith live within him, which uh, was later clarified to mean that uh, they they occupy the same... uh, living body mm-hmm. but Pal- palpatine spirit is the one in in charge right um it, it's similar with with ray she says i'm all the jedi yeah. they okay. they come together you hear you hear obi-wan you hear yoda you hear anakin and and they imbue her with the the jedi power yeah i i get that i'm just saying with a little bit of a clearer explanation i could accept it more because we could have somebody who's on the other side who makes a theory of how ray did it herself who's you know loves the thing and maybe I have to hear that out. But if it's well, not definitively explained in the movie somehow, then I I gotta just say it's a theory. Then you know. Well, it's uh, that's that's my interpretation. Is how I would put yeah. that. Yeah, I, I, yeah, it's a good interpretation. You know, makes me feel a little better about it. But you know, how about like at the end, Luke's Force Ghost steps up and says something like, "You were infused the power of all the Jedi. The light side has be you know a, a, a line like that." I, I like that like, type of shit too. That, that would know, have been cool. That's yeah. like, as, as a writer, as writers, that's just how I feel. Like, I hate exposition and explaining things, but at the yeah. right time, it has to be done. Like, mm-hmm. the shit explana- explanation is in The Force Awakens, like, when, like, Han meets Leia for the first time again. Like, oh, it wasn't you. It was Kylo. Oh, you went back to what you were doing in the past. It was this terrible, terrible exposition. Yes. You know, there's no excuse for that. And Yeah. But... That stuff has its place when you need to explain something like we're talking about. Well, that's that's like I said, man. That's that's probably my biggest gripe with this film is some of the dialogue. Uh, you know, Palpatine has returned. How can this be? You, you know, like those type of scenes. It's just telling us plot points. I don't like that type of shit, period. I, I don't like uh, the dude saying, I'm the spy for no reason. You know, it, it is a shock that that Hux was a spy. It made you know nobody seen that coming. But no, whoa, um, oh, oh, no, no, no. People saw that coming for like years. I have a video on that. What when he pulls out the gun? No, no, that he was a spy that leaked out a while ago. Yeah, but I see. I never, I never seen anything. I mean, the only okay. thing I could think of is when he pulls the gun on Kylo as he's laying on the ground. Okay. Yeah. If you didn't know about that. But it was it was known in the community of people who have been following leaks and articles and things like that. Well, I, I stayed away from that, as you know. Okay, uh, yeah. Um, the, the point I'm trying to make with that is uh, what did he have to gain from being a spy? He didn't go with them. He didn't desert the First Order. He just has some personal gripe with Kylo Ren. Yeah. It makes, it yeah. makes no sense. I know. Well, there's a uh, ton of stuff like that about the writing. There's a ton of stuff like that. Yeah, see that that's that's my main problem is is certain dialogue and certain choices like that. But like um, even without getting into the political end, which I do, we could pick out writing things that like with Chewie's death, okay? Yeah. Like it it just he came back immediately. It was almost like they didn't really have it planned out. I would have almost rather just have Chewie dead as a story. I I mean, no, I love the character, but if you know what I mean, as far as a story effect and to hit the heartstrings in the movie that would have even been a little better than like, he's just back with no, again, no explanation. Well, they did the same thing with, with uh, C-3PO. They killed him sure. and brought him back. Uh, they, they killed Ray and brought her back. They killed Kylo, brought him back. Right. See, People were saying that too, about this movie, the old trick. That's another problem. Too much. Yeah. That's, that's yeah. another problem with this movie is you have a lot of characters die and come back. There's so many problems, man. I, I mean, even when, like, Zori Bliss came on screen and Ray, even Ray being there in the group when Zori Bliss comes on screen, you know Zori Bliss isn't a threat because Ray's I there. Di- I didn't hate uh, Zori Bliss. I thought she was all right. Yeah, I, I thought she was an okay character. I'm just saying you know she's not a threat because Ray is well, there. Well, it kind of enhances uh, post character bringing her in. <laughs> what, the smuggler who's somehow miraculously the best pilot ever? Well... Um, you know, I, I, I will say this also, as I felt that the Disney crew, as I refer to them, which is Poe, Finn, and Ray, were stronger leads than in the previous two. Yeah, everything was better. We agree on that. Yeah. Everything, you know, Poe and Finn had a few moments. Well, actually, Finn was 
Okay. Finn mostly yells for Ray. There's two times in the movie where he yells, Ray, like look out kind of thing. And you know, there's two problems with this. One is that it does it she's never in danger, so he's just yelling like an idiot, you know. And two, his they never the screams never mean anything. She doesn't look and then like, you know, get out of the way or something. He's just yelling like an idiot. So that's like Finn's character is like yelling for Ray. Well, see, that's that's another missed opportunity. Is is their relationship was never fully fleshed out. Uh, you know, they gave him, yeah. Yeah. they gave him t two or three romantic interests. You know what I mean throughout the film when they set up in the first one. But right. but see, that's that type of shit really isn't all that interesting to me. What happens happens in that in that regard. But um, well, if it's not all that interesting, then it's not a great thing that's in the movie, is it? That's well, just another negative upon negative upon negative. I, I wouldn't say it's a negative. Uh, in in my writing, I have romance and and relationships. Do you is, waste time with your romance, and are they meaningless in the end? No, it's not meaningless. Um, I don't waste time with it, but uh, I think it's a, I think it's a necessary component of a good story. Is you have to have some sort of romance uh, relationship type but of thing. We agree. I'm just saying they. Again, like you said, the execution's tips piss poor. So it for, ends for, up <laughs> for uh, for which which one which thing? For Finn's romance executions, it ends up going nowhere. Oh yeah, it was and terrible. It was, why why was there this awkward kiss at the end of the Last Jedi when like Rose didn't even? I mean, when Finn didn't even want to kiss her back. What was the point of that awkward? What was the whole point of that thing? Yeah. There wasn't. See, that's that's where the disconnect happens, where you have the two different uh, visions. You know what I mean? Uh, right. Yeah, I mean, I, I think the biggest problem is is a, a lack of a cohesive vision, and I think a lot of people would uh, but Zach, would, that's would like, agree. That's like an inc that's like a back baking. I'm sorry. That's like a back breaking problem. That's yes, just it is. Like a problem. You know. That's like but, a back-breaking, game-changing problem. You know? But as a writer, though, I want to talk about a couple other things that I like. Um, okay. a, 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 and let me know if you agree with this. I feel like as somebody who, who writes, uh, and, and uh, for those of you guys who don't know, uh, John has written a book. I've tried to convince him to publish it in the past. But um, I, I really like that scene with uh, Palpatine. The, uh, the imagery, some of the imagery is, is fucking gorgeous in this. The, yeah, the image yeah, yeah. I enjoyed seeing. I agree with yeah. You know. The the imagery of Palpatine in that creepy machine, right? Where the, I'm talking the zoomed out shot of going all the way up to the ceiling, surrounded by the Sith Eternal. Yeah, you kind of called that, by the way. Uh, which which part, Mecha Mecha, Palpatine? Yeah, yeah. Well, That's I mean, I I didn't really know what to expect, but uh, yeah, that that sort of imagery, that creepiness, I love that type of shit. Yeah, that worked. Yeah, yeah, he he worked as far as like the aesthetics, sure, you know. Well, um I I mean the Uber Lightning attack was was badass too. Okay. I, I it didn't do much for me like his No. Nothing. Yeah. Come on. I like seeing him and his voice. No, I'm saying I like seeing him, you know, hearing his voice was kind of cool. I do like, you know, it was a little cheesy like I was every voice you've ever heard or something. Now, I thought that was kind of cool. You know, if you dig too deep into it, you'll find problems. We don't have to dig deep into everything. You know, I, I could I could give them a pass. And I've even given The Last Jedi pass, and Disney Star was a pass on a few things, you know. Well, did you... you, you so you were not impressed by the... Uh, by him single-handedly taking... Or disabling, I guess is more correct. Disabling the, the fleet. Yeah, no, it was cool. It's cool, you know. It was cool, or it was one of the coolest things that's no, ever happened. No, I, I, I thought I didn't think nothing about it like blew me away. But uh, yeah, it was cool. The problem that's, was people said like all the star destroyers had like Death Star beams in them, which was kind of yeah. silly because they would have just destroyed everything and been invincible. Not only that, what happened to that fleet? Did that fleet end up getting destroyed? The the Sith fleet. Yeah, what happened to it? Um. Well, uh, so I, from what I understand is they were not allowed to to leave or something. There was something to do with the signal, okay. right? The, the signal tower, okay. right? Something to do with that. Because a lot of people are saying they're not really getting closure on what's what's up with that. Like they're still out there. Those ships didn't get destroyed. Palpatine got yeah. beat. 
but his ships didn't get destroyed. And that's a lot of freaking ships to leave hanging out in the galaxy there, you know? Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I mean, what would make sense is that they took them over, right? Yeah. Or if maybe cheesy, but if they had some kind of like domino effect explosion for them somehow, it might have been cheesy, but at least there would be closure on them, you know, getting destroyed, you know? Uh, what did you think of Lando coming back? It was fine. You know, I mean, I, I personally knew it was Lando at that point in the movie. I was, I was pretty sure, like, I think there's going to be Lando here because of, like, his throwback to the Return of the Jedi, you know, mm -hmm. um, outfit. But, uh, yeah, I thought it was fine. He was respected. Um, it was fine. You know what I mean? Like, how, what's the best I could say about it? You, Billy, D, um, Billy D. Williams was a character. He was back, and it was pretty good, you know? Han scene, I thought that was probably the best, one of the best scenes in the movie. I'm glad you said that because I thought yeah. it was a cool scene too. Yeah. Yeah. In, in the right context, that would have been amazing. Imagine, you know, the right context where it's a little more complex. Maybe mm -hmm. we have like Luke creating that image for Han or something like that where it's like really more about our beloved characters and they plan that out and Luke's Force Ghost comes to Han, you know, when the Force Awakens, if they had this all planned out, like, you know, one day, Han, if your son doesn't turn, I'm going to do my best to turn him, you know? Then, like, Luke dies in the Return and uh, Last Jedi somehow comes back in the, you know, Rise of Skywalker, you know, as a Force Ghost. You know what I'm saying? If it was planned out, it could have been so much better. Yeah. No, I, now I, I, totally, like, I totally agree. Now it's, um, good in, it's good in isolation now, basically, without seeing the shit around it. You mean Episode Nine? Yeah. That scene is, there's a lot of good scenes in isolation. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like you said, the Luke and Leia flashback is great in isolation. Yep. Um, the Han scene with Kylo is great in isolation. And, you know, off the top of my head, I can't go through, like, a bunch of them. But basically, my point is there are some good scenes, like the Last Jedi R2 hologram scene, that work alone in isolation. I, see, I, I really enjoyed the uh, the Death Star 2 sequence. I, I liked uh, uh, Palpatine's vault that had... And so, so that thing with the with the uh, dark side ray mm -hmm. was actually Palpatine's enchantments on that room that made oh, you see. Yeah, yeah that, that was cool. That was cool. Now I got to ask you, cause I've only seen it one time and uh, sure. you know, yeah, was, yeah. was that real? Was she a real, what was she actually fighting there? Was she, was that real or just like in her mind? Like that was dark side magic. Okay. So now what would have made the movie is if she got her arm cut off by like her dark ray or her hand or something. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Then she's like out through half the movie. She's struggling. Then when, you know, she gets back into the action, she struggles. Kylo helps her beat, you know, Palpatine or something. But we get Ray to have a real injury and a real setback where she really needs Finn and Poe to come in and help her. Be like, Finn, Poe, you know, I got my freaking limb cut off or I got slashed really bad by this lightsaber. I really need you guys. But instead, they're just in the background, and Ray just continues to do everything perfectly. So, you know, every scene, we could sit here right now and in minutes make it much better. I, I agree uh, in, in certain ways. There's there's some things that I did like. You know, like I've been talking about some of the things I like, some of the things I don't like. Another one of the things I liked was Ray Skywalker. Uh, it's, uh, I don't know. It's a little weird. It's a little weird. I, 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 I like, like to give her a bub line. No, go ahead. No, I, so I, I like that scene because, uh, you know, seeing Luke and Leia just off screen was pretty cool. Um, her, her, that, that scene was her rejecting her, her evil, uh, ancestry, Palpatine, you know, and she's saying, no, no, no. I, I, I identify with, with good. With uh, Leia and Luke, you know, I I like that. I do like that they gave her a bloodline, but the thing is, we have you know the Skywalker struggling against the Palpatines or the Palpatine through the saga, which is essentially what the saga is about, and then the end half is about Palpatines against Palpatines. And it's almost like you didn't really need the Skywalker so much. It's like, uh, I, well, what? Th that's a, a criticism of this film that I really don't like. That uh, that it 
it underplays the importance of of previous films. I don't understand how. Well, it definitely underplays the importance of Anakin and Luke struggling through the original trilogy to you know get rid of Palpatine. If he's just going to come back, so what, if, was if all, I, what was all that struggle for? Well, it's like if a soldier goes out to fight for their country and dies, their their sacrifice is still just as meaningful. Yeah, that wasn't really the point, though. I mean, the point was to end this thing. Like, soldiers, you... I mean... Okay, it's a little bit different than, like... You can't, like... All right, it's hard to explain. But, like, two what? special soldiers usually can't definitively end a war. That usually takes, like, the whole militia and the whole army to end that. This is, like, the the, the honed-in story of two special people, you know? Well, I he guess made like, a, a sacrifice, so... You know, mm-hmm. why, why, why does why does Palpatine's return underplay his sacrifice? It was done in Dark Empire. It was it was always part of George Lucas, from what I understand. And, and maybe you can next time we do a podcast, if you find some further information, yeah, maybe. You can, I don't I don't know all the details on this. So. Uh, that that Lucas always wanted Palpatine to return. You got the Dark Empire comics where he returns like three or four times. It, it doesn't destroy the legacy of Anakin, in my opinion. And, and Anakin was not a heroic character either. He was at the end. And maybe, maybe at the beginning, but he was always a character who was a gray character. Well, he, I, go by, I go by George R. Def, George R. Martin's definition of hero is the best. Yeah, and go his ahead. Definition is, is, his definition is a hero is not the person who's going through the whole thing, doing the fighting, beating the enemies. A hero is the person that seizes that one moment and does the important thing like um, Sam in The Lord of the Rings. He's not fighting like Aragorn and Legolas and Frodo through the whole thing. He's the hero because at that one moment, he sees the chance to save the ring. That's what a hero is. So Anakin at that one moment saw the chance to get rid of the Emperor and became the hero. So Luke wasn't the hero because of that. You know, Han and Leia weren't the heroes because of that. And Rey, you know, isn't really the hero going through the whole thing, beating everyone. The hero is the person at that one moment, if that makes sense to you. Uh, it does make sense, but um, I, I can't see Anakin as a hero. He, mm-hmm. He's killed too many people. Well, I, you don't have to use it in the literal sense as hero somebody who is good. It you know could you in the sense of somebody who solved the situation as being the hero you know well he's he's a great character Vader is a great character one of my favorite characters but is he a hero no you know in, in my view um, I, so so you feel that that Palpatine's return compromises uh, uh, one through six it makes it feel a lot less important put it that way. But you have I, such. It, it comp, I, I mean, it just it just under it makes it feel like well, you know, we're getting to this point, but he's just going to come back bigger and better and stronger. And that's another thing; he came back stronger, right? His fleet was bigger than ever. And mm-hmm. on top of it, they didn't explain it, which is another like half of the puzzle. Is that they, if they explained it properly and did it properly, that would be better. But since they didn't do it properly, it's not easy to accept. Well, I, I remember hearing years ago stories, uh, you, you know, you could probably credit Star Wars Theory, some of those guys, of Palpatine hearing voices calling to him from the unknown regions. Right? I don't know. Do you, did you ever see any of that? I don't really care what's not in the movies. I need the things to be explained in the movies or it's just, you know, kind of fun speculation. I care about what like 95% of the audience is given as content. And I mean, I don't know for sure, but I'm going to guess less than 10% reads, you know, Dark Empire and all that stuff. Who goes to see the movie? Yeah, that's true. So yeah, I, don't I, I can't, I can't get into it, and I can't really care what's said. It's, it's about what they present to the public, basically. Well, the, the, so Dark Empire was legends, right? But there's mm-hmm. canon materials of of Palpatine having explored the unknown regions, set up different little research facilities during his time b- before his death. Right. But uh, what did you think of the Sith Eternal? What what you gotta explain? The uh, the the 
people chanting and all that. So apparently that's a group of characters called the Sith Eternal. And, okay. And this this new force Palpatine created is called the uh, Sith. Uh, you mean the people that were showing like in the Snoke um, clone room? No, no, no. The people at the end who were chanting when Ray comes out and they're in the arena and you've got all those hooded characters. Th those characters are called the Sith Eternal who are okay. Palpatine's. Yeah, kind of cool, you know. They they worship him like a god, sort of. Right, right, yeah. right, right. It's kind of cool. Yeah. I don't know. Anyway, uh, anything else on uh, Star Wars uh, episode nine? No, we we could go. We could go for um, I don't know hours. We could it could we could ne it could never end. It really, honestly, it could never end. So. All right. And well, like I said, okay. my, one of my main points is that we talked about the Last Jedi for two years, like almost every day. So this movie's been out like. 10 days now. You know what I mean? So it's all got to sink in on um, positives or negatives. It's all got to sink in a lot more. Um, one thing I've noticed, um, and, and I actually wanted to talk to you a little bit about uh, YouTube and, and sort of your, uh, your uh, uh, rise as a YouTuber. Um, yeah. One of the things I can confirm or deny this, that the hype around nine is way lower than it was with the last year. Oh, yeah. You, you, know, can, you can confirm that for yourself. I mean, you know. Because, like, half the fan base was, like, totally skeptical, you know? It, it's like, um, it's like see first, judge later. It used to be like, oh, man, Star Wars is coming out. It's going to be awesome. We're all hyped. It's going to be good. And now it's like, you know, see it first and then judge it, basically. Well, let my friend go and then tell me how it is. That's never how Star Wars was. Star Wars was like, I got to be there first day to be the first one to see it, tell everyone about it. Now it's like Why? the opposite. I, I went and seen it opening night, and it was it was pretty packed. Uh, right, but uh, interest online seems to have definitely waned since last right. time. Right, right, yeah. Well, yeah. You don't need me to tell you that, man. You know, it's just not, not. It's not what it was. Put it that way. Not so, even close. It's now. Um, it's just another, you know franchise in the mix. What is the state of the fandom menace? That's What's complicated. That's complicated because I don't believe there is a fandom menace. All right? Because, like, people like William Shatner, who who talks to Doomcock on Twitter once in a while and actually mingles with, you know, YouTubers, you could call fandom menace because his attitude is against SJ – he actually argues with SJWs, tell him to shut up. So he essentially is fandom menace, quote-unquote, you know? Well, I, I mean I mean the anti-Last Jedi people. What, what are they saying about – just in general – Saying it's what, absolutely what? horrible, and I am too. I think The Rise of Skywalker, as a Star Wars movie, is absolutely horrible. I can enjoy it as a film in general, forgetting it's Star Wars, I guess. So out of you 10, know, what would you give it out of 10? I, I, I got to I mean, I don't want this to sound like a cop-out, but there's like two ratings here. It's like one, as a Star Wars movie, is a saga, and two is like just a movie. Oh, as really? like just a movie to like go out, and if you don't know what the hell Star Wars is... Yeah, maybe it's like a ten. It's it's still sci-fi. It's amazing. It's you know, it's um well, got I, I some think, great spits. as a Star Wars. I think it's like a negative five. I think it's seriously. just terrible. You could have ten bet. You know, Rise of Skywalker. Better. Yeah. You give a negative five. Yeah, it's just in the negatives. For me, it ruins everything that comes before it. You know, I don't enjoy Wait. seeing Ray. So seeing a character, I don't enjoy kind of taking the place of a character I've loved my whole life for thirty-five years. That's like negative for me. I wish it was never made, basically. Um, so I would give it probably an eight. Okay. Like I said, there's two ratings. If it, if I wasn't a Star Wars fan and I didn't give a crap. Well, me, I grew yeah. up on the prequels. I know. Okay. Right. You know, but um, I, I enjoyed it, man. I enjoyed it, dog. So I enjoyed it, it too. Like it I is. said, it's two different ratings for me, you know? If I went in, if I had never seen Star Wars in my life, or I'd maybe just seen like The Last Jedi and Force Awakens, thought they were okay, I'd be like, damn, this is a 10, it's sit at the ballpark. But if thinking about Star Wars and how it connects to like one through six, then I'm like, well, look at the job they did. You know, if you're really invested, you can't forgive all the like hang ups in the story and all the poor writing choices. But if you're not like a fan, you could just forgive that stuff. And you don't, it doesn't really matter so much. You just want to enjoy the thing, you know? Okay. Well, we have you for about uh, five more minutes here. I know you got to get going. So uh, yeah. let's uh, 
quickly get into the Mandalorian season one. All right. Yeah, absolutely. So what what did you think, man? Because I thought it was kind of a cool show. It was something different. Um, it was cool seeing a live action Star Wars show. I felt it was well crafted. Uh, certain elements of it were kind of boring in certain places, but uh, as as a first season, I really enjoyed it. I have nothing negative to say. I love the show. I mean, I felt like it lagged a little bit. I, I don't know uh, if you agree. I don't care. I just enjoy seeing the Star Wars universe, even if it's a little slow. The world building was great. And, um, you know, that's it. I have no complaints, basically. It's, oh, well, there's one thing I really bothered me at the end, unfortunately. Have you seen Sin City? I have. And what Bruce Willis says, you know, to the girl, he's like, always confirm the kill. Logically, you confirm the kill, okay? So Morph Gideon was part of destroying the Mandalorian's town. He's after the Mandalorian for this precious thing out to kill him. And they don't confirm he's dead? Mm -hmm. I, He's a cool I, character, though. I like yeah. Gideon. I'm just saying, from a story point, that bothered me. I was like, oh, man. Like, we didn't think he was dead. Did you think he was dead? No. <laughs> I mean, you know what I mean? Know. Like, here's how it should have ended. Basically, they should have shown him cut out. They wanted to show the black lightsaber. He walks away. After he walks away, the Mandalorian and Cara Dune come over the hill and see he's escaped. Boom. End of season one. Oh, my God. What's going to happen next? You, you, did you like the dark saber? Oh yeah, yeah. Like I said, everything was great except that one moment bothered me. But I have nothing negative to say. There was. Were, better were you a, a Breaking Bad guy? I've never seen it. Oh, okay, because that's the main antagonist of Breaking Bad. So Breaking Bad fans are are really happy, and myself included. I, I love that actor, uh, Gus Fring from Breaking Bad. Okay, I've heard good things about the show, but I've never actually seen it. Well, that dude is awesome. That that dude knows how to play a good uh, yeah. villain. Well, and there's a the thing about like like um being called a hater is like you guys hate everything. It's just really a paraphrase. I love the Joker. I love the Mandalorian. You hear me criticize Star Wars for two years every day, but I say I love the Mandalorian. So how do I hate Star Wars? I mean, I love it. I, I'm probably gonna watch the season, you know, again and again. Well, my main thing is, and um, you know, uh, I'm sure s certain people will recognize my my voice probably. Yeah. Um. For me, it just got a little too repetitive. It got a little too intense, you know. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, I, I'm a big Star Wars fan. Um, I, I think the the main thing that I think of, uh, and, and one of the messages I want to put out there is that we can all be friends. You know what I mean? Let's let's like let's put our our let's holster our blasters. You know, let's talk about Star Wars. Let's let's not go crazy. Well, here's, here's the problem: is that you know what I said before about Kathleen Kennedy putting in her feminist and SJW agenda is that some people won't admit it. If they would just admit that, then we'd get along. They have to at least admit it because it's obviously there. And they have a problem with white dudes. I'll say it: they have a problem with white dudes, and that's not cool. You don't bring racial issues into entertainment. Maybe it's not like directly Kathleen Kennedy. And, you know, well, Ryan Johnson said something about white dudes, so it's him, all right? And even if it's Forbes or these bigger, you know, Disney never says something like, well, this is in our opinion. They never cover it or try to, like, say something like they disagree. They just complete silence on it, you know? And it's out there. It's You know, things get hundreds of thousands of views that say, you know, bad stuff about white dudes and men also in general. And if people don't acknowledge that and say, oh, no big deal, they say stuff about white dudes and Brie Larson and stuff, then, yeah, I'm not going to be friends with them. Because mm -hmm. what that does is it encourages other people to say stuff about white dudes, like Ruby Rose says stuff about white dudes, probably because Brie Larson and Ryan Johnson did. She feels like she can get away with it. And what that does is it makes other people in society feel like they could say stuff about white dudes because that's the example being set. So unfortunately, it's gotten a lot nastier than just like we disagree on plot points and how good the movies are, according to it being Star Wars. And that's that's where the uh, infighting comes from, I think. Mm. Well, yeah, I mean, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, hopefully, uh, you, hopefully, we could do another one of these uh, at some point. Uh, uh, thanks for being on the show, John. And guys, check out Entertainment Hacker, uh, great channel. And uh, I've I've been a fan of John's. I've been a subscriber of John's for many years. So uh, definitely check out his stuff. And we will catch you guys next time.